Watercolour backgrounds for beginners. In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint a suggestion of water for a swan study I'm working on. Hi, my name is Paul Hopkinson and I'm a professional watercolour wildlife artist. And I teach online on my website, I have a look at the link down below, and also of course here on YouTube. So phalo blue to a watery consistency. And this one here, which is Payne's Grey, I have to think then. Payne's Grey also to a water consistency. Now, always make more than you think you're going to use because there's nothing worse than running out of paint in the middle of doing a background. If you go, oh, I've got to make some more, got to make some more. And then it starts drying on you. So always get the colours ready and prepared before you make a start on something as big as a background, okay? So have it all in there ready to go. I say more than you think you'll need. So I'm going to water this down just a little bit more there. A few more drops and probably the same with the Payne's Grey. Get that brush a wash out. And I've just done some testing on here, as you can see. There's your paint's grey. I'm just picking a little bit. That should wash the brush out, really. Bad habit, Paul, bad habit. Look how dark that is. But what will happen is, if you wet the paper first, if I get another piece of test paper, I'll show you what I mean. Look, this will do. So I'm going to wet this first of all. This is my old, 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 old acrylic mixing brush, so it's not a decent painting brush or watercolour, that's for sure. Allow that to soak into the paper a little bit. I'm just going to go straight onto the top of this so because it will soak in fairly quick because it's dry paper. And then you put your colour over the top and you find that the colour will go on much paler because the water on the paper is mixing, it's diluting that colour for you. And then get some Payne's Grey and then this will go in for some of those kind of ripple effects. Before you put the ripple effects in, just make sure that the blue has gone off just a little bit. So it doesn't blend too much, okay? I want it to blend and soften, but it doesn't have to be too much. Right, time to paint a suggestion of water. Got the colours ready to go. So we've got phalo blue, we've got Payne's grey, and these are both very watery consistencies. This one is Payne's grey on its own again, but it's more of, a, more of a milky consistency. So think about it just a little bit thicker than tap water, okay? So that's more of a milky consistency. The brushes I'm gonna use, are I've got an old mop brush and this is a like a half inch mop brush that's all it is very very soft hair on there and this one synthetic which is an old uh, size 18 pro art so I've had it for many many years in fact they used to be a nice point on that once upon a time yeah okay so I only tend to use it for applying backgrounds and you can see why really but it's ideal for that it really is get your mop brush and the first thing we need to do is wet the background and you want to wet the background two or three times. That way it can stay wetter longer and give you that little bit more working time when we're adding the colours over the top. Right, that's soaking in lovely, it really is. If I just tilt that a minute, you can still see it's got a shine on it. It's not quite as shiny as it was, but it's still very, very wet. So you don't want to touch it with your fingers, whatever you do. Right, you ready? Let's go for it. So get your size, in this case, my old, old, old size 18 brush. I'm going to wet it first of all, though. I want these bristles to be nice and soft before I make a start on this. And I'm going to get some of the phalo blue first. Now, this should be quite watery, remember. You don't want it too thick. And we'll start off at the very top and work our way down. Now, the thing about when you're painting any large areas such as this as well is that you've got to consider the paper drying. So wherever you painted first, i.e. right at the top, that's obviously going to dry the quickest, isn't it? It's going to dry first. So you have to bear that in mind. So keep that in your head a little bit while you're painting, because every now and then, just pop back up again, just re-wet it before it starts drying. This, that way you should be able to maintain that wetness within that area. Now, as you're applying this, try and keep it in horizontal strokes, or thereabouts anyway, as you come down the paper. Also, don't forget to click on that subscribe button down below and don't forget that bell icon as well, just so you'll never miss one of my YouTube videos. We don't have to be too precise with anything like this. That's the beauty about our watercolours, really. Anything like this, because we're not painting this one yet. We can really kind of let it go. Let it go. Oh, <clears throat> yeah, there's a song about that one as well, isn't there? So just sweep it across like so. All the way down the paper. It's definitely drying quick. I want to maintain that wetness. I'm going to go back to the top. Remember what I said? Just add a little bit more back up there. 
keep thinking about that while you're working on it. You don't want it drying too quick on you. So it's quite a large piece of paper for me. I do like to paint quite small. So when you're working on a large area like this, as I say, just make sure you maintain that wetness all the time. Keep thinking, is it still wet? Where's it drying? Oh, let's get back. Yeah, see what I mean? I'm going to increase the colour of this. So I'm going to go over the same area again, just to make sure it's a bit more intense on this blue. Because this phthalo blue is a very strong colour. Really, it's a lovely blue there. Probably one of my favourite blues, if not my favourite blue. And then we're going to pick up, without washing the brush, a bit more. <laughs> a little bit more. Some of the Payne's Grey. Okay, start from the top and start adding a little bit of this in. Remember, start from the top, because that's going to dry the quickest, as we know. Or the, that will dry the soonest. Is that the right word? The soonest or the quickest? And remember these horizontal lines, we're going to add this in. Skip places as well while you're doing this. Leave gaps in between. That's all we're doing. We can increase this a little bit more. I'm just trying to maintain this wetness, remember. Just leave gaps. Oh, just onto the nose there. It don't matter. It's only white. <laughs> so all the way down. Keep going. And I might darken it a bit more down the bottom here. Probably not quite as dark. Just take some of that paint off. Leaving gaps in between. Okay, now for the slightly stronger version of the paint's grey. Oh, it's all welling up down the bottom there. And I'm going to add just a little bit more. We can always mix it in if it's too much. Just in places now. Stronger version. It's a lovely colour that paint's grey, isn't it? Because it is obviously a bluey black, isn't it, at the end of the day? Using the very tip of the brush, even though there's not much of a tip on this one, as you know. <laughs> You can switch your brush to like a size 5 at this stage if you want to. Just remember, keep it wet. That's the key. Keep it wet. Horizontal strokes, little wiggles in, in between as well. So when you're adding these wiggles in, you're looking at something like this lot. Like that, okay? Give you some ideas on what I'm about. And don't take too long with it as well. Because if you start thinking about, oh, I'll just do a little bit more there and a little bit more there the paper will start drying on you, and as I, as I mentioned, you've got to keep an eye on that. If it starts to dry, just re-wet the area with some paint, not just with water, so it will just dilute it. A little bit more around there. I want to match that in, because it's quite dark on that side of the beak there, so I'm going to darken this side to kind of follow through, probably even around there as well. And then again, darken down the bottoms. And I think we're nearly there. Yeah. So leave it to dry in normal room temperature for two or three hours until everything's nice and flat on the plate on the paper. And it's there's no coldness to the paper either when you put your hand on it. I can't do it now, obviously. Um, but then that'll give us some general idea on how it could be. Alright, so I'll see you well in two or three hours' time, or in your case. Just a matter of seconds when this is nice and dry. Right, now a few hours have gone by and it's nice and dry. As you can see, it's nice and flat, lovely and flat on there, which is what I want it to be. That's why I like to use a block pad as well, because very often it does dry nice and flat. So without that kind of cockling, undulating, which you tend to get if you don't stretch the paper first. At this stage, I would remove the masking fluid and begin working on the swan. The swan works really well against the intense blue background and suggestion of ripples is just enough without detracting from the main subject. Incidentally, if you're interested in painting the whole swan, click on the Learn More link down below and take a look at becoming a member of my online school.